Greetings, guys, gals, and non binary pals, and welcome back to another video. We as humans like to gender literally everything, even down to languages. There are so many languages that are gendered. Everything has a gender. I am a speaker of French. I use that incredibly lightly. Don't try to talk to me in French. I will not be able to hold a conversation. But I did take it for many years. And that is a language where everything is, is gendered. Everything has a gender. For what reason? I don't know. Who knows? It just does. And that extends, obviously, outside of language to just kind of everything. We have decided that gender looks a specific way. Specific things are for specific genders. We like to put ourselves into little boxes and limit ourselves to what we are allowed to do and enjoy. And there is a place on Reddit called r slash pointlessly gendered where people like to post their findings out in the world of some of these silly little gendered things that are so blatantly obvious and hilarious. And so we're gonna have a look at some of these ridiculously, pointlessly gendered things because it's always amusing to know what people are projecting gender onto these days, you know? But before we get into it, I would like to let you know that for today's video, I am partnering with Geology and I will tell you a bit more about them shortly. And I would also like to say thank you to today's patron of the day, Morgan. I appreciate you and your support so much. Thank you so much for joining and I hope that you enjoy this video. If anyone else would like to become a patron, go to patreon.com slash savvycat or click the top link in the description. I appreciate it greatly. Yeah, so let's have a dive into some pointlessly gendered things. So we have a classic bathroom sign because those are always so funny what they like decide is fit for male versus female. And this is at an ice skating rink. So to the right, we have the figure skating toilet. And to the left, we have the ice hockey toilet. And obviously the silhouette of the figure skater is like a dress and more feminine. And then the ice hockey is more masculine because obviously, all figure skaters are women and all ice hockey players are men. That's just the way that the world works. You don't get any female ice hockey players and you don't get any male figure skaters, obviously. Although I do find it really funny to just think about the fact that the toilets are actually, they're not gendered at all. They're just separated like, no, this is the figure skater toilet and this is the ice hockey player toilet. They're not actually even gendered. They're like separated by sports, <laughs> which almost makes more sense, to be honest. I did figure skating as a kid and I promise I had some boys in my class. And also obviously just like look at figure skating in general and the amount of men who do it <laughs> and the amount of women who play freaking ice hockey. We don't have to get into it. We know that this is silly and it's not gendered at all, but sure. To me, baking is feminine and cooking is masculine. And baking is basically cooking's wife, if that makes sense. Why did I understand this perfectly? Because baking is light and sweet and women are sugar and spice and everything nice. And cooking is masculine because more open flames and harshness, powerful like a man. How about we just like don't gender cooking? <laughs> I always find this so interesting of people do love to be like a woman's place is in the kitchen women are meant to cook food and serve food and prepare food blah, blah, blah. but then like more chefs are men and then people say shit like this they're like cooking is a masculine thing because it requires flames blah, 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 blah. and i just find that really fascinating like cooking is a woman's job until it's a profession which is it's so interesting being like baking is light and sweet and like implying that it's like this easy sort of thing and cooking is like this much more intense, harder thing to do. But like baking overall is harder than cooking. I'm gonna fucking say that, all right? Because like baking is an exact science. Like you have to have everything measured and perfect for it to like work well. Whereas cooking, you have a lot more freedom with cooking. You can fuck around so much more with cooking and like figure it out. And if you like add one thing of too much, you can like add something else, to, like balance it out. There's a lot of push pull with cooking that's like more experimental. Whereas baking is like an exact thing. And I just think that baking is like 
under acknowledged as an art form and being something that's a really difficult and impressive thing to be able to do. Again, though, neither of, neither of these are gendered at all. Both of them are different in different ways and both of them have different aspects depending on what you're making as well. Just let people do what they want. Stop gendering shit. This is a tweet from the New York Post that says, dressing like a lesbian is the sexy and powerful new fashion trend. And it's just women in suits. It's just, <laughs> it's just women in suits. I love that just wearing a suit makes it dressing as a lesbian. Like that's so fucking funny. Does that mean when men wear suits, they're dressing as lesbians? Is that what we're saying here? Either everyone is a lesbian or everyone's just wearing freaking suits, man. Wearing a suit doesn't say anything about your sexuality or anything other than I'm wearing a suit and I look fucking good. I thought we'd move past this like years ago. Like I know that we used to like way back when be like wearing a suit is like a thing that like lesbians did and whatnot, you know? But that was like decades ago. I thought we had moved past that. Like it wasn't true then, it's not true now, but the fact that people are still talking about it like it is, is like ridiculous. Did you not get tired of this like 20 years ago? How do you look so young? Women, moisturizer, exfoliating, charcoal masks, eye cream, serums, men. I wash my face with shampoo. Don't wash your face with shampoo. This like weird show offy thing that like, these men seem to have with just not caring about like personal hygiene is wild to me. Like it's not a flex that you wash your face with shampoo. It's not a flex that you use a soap bar to wash your entire body, your face and your hair. Like that's, that's not the flex that you think it is. <laughs> and also then just like making fun of women for having like long skincare routines and like caring about their skin is so ridiculous and silly as well. Like, yeah, I like my skin to be clean and feel nice. I'm not gonna put shampoo on my face because it's gonna clog my pores and having clogged pores is so uncomfortable. I don't wanna break out and have blackheads and be like itchy and have my skin all flaky, you know? Like, I just don't understand how you can be here being like, why do women like take care of their skin and like look after it? Which is ridiculous. Cause one, not all women have solid skincare routines. And two, some men do have solid skincare routines. Like this isn't a gendered issue. This is something that like you either have a skincare routine or you don't. But this whole implication that like men don't give a shit and like it's seen as like feminine to like give a shit about your skin is so freaking silly. I don't get it at all. I think that we should all be taking good care of our skin. I personally love having a skincare routine because it's like grounding. Like having routine is nice in general. Like starting my day and like washing my face and putting on moisturizer and then finishing my day doing the same thing. Like it's grounding. It makes my skin feel nice. And it just, it makes me feel more comfortable and connected with myself. And that is where today's video partner, Geology, is perfect. Geology is a 29 time award winning skin, hair and body care company who aim to make skincare effective and easy. And I absolutely adore Geology. As I said, I love having a skincare routine and I am someone who has really struggled to find skincare that works for my skin. I have sensitive skin, especially when it comes to cleanses for some reason my skin hates like 99 percent of all cleanses but geology is the first one i've tried in a really really long time that actually clears my skin and doesn't cause me to break out it clears my breakouts as cleanses are meant to do <laughs> and how it works is you go and take a skin survey and answer some just basic questions about your skin type and what you're looking for and they formulate a little routine for you to use every morning and every night and it comes with a cleanser that you use both morning and night a moisturizer that you use in the morning and a retinol night cream that you use in the evening. And they are such nice products. I genuinely am so, so in love with them. They make my skin feel so good. They have cleared up my skin 
so much over the past like year and a half that I've been using them. And on top of that, I also personally really like their vitamin C and E serum that I get separately that you just use every morning. And on top of that also, as I said, they do body care as well. And my favorite body care product that they do is their acne control body wash. I have a skin condition that causes me to get really bad body acne in certain places. And it's really hard to get rid of. And it's also like really uncomfortable and unpleasant. And I find that this genuinely really helps in relieving some of that. And it is entirely vegan and cruelty free, which is incredibly important to me. And I know to a lot of you as well, and it can be really hard to find skincare sometimes. So I do highly, highly recommend investing in some and just improving your skincare in like an easy way that doesn't take up too much of your time. If you would like to try Geology for yourself, which I cannot recommend enough, then use the link in the description or the QR code up on screen and use my code KIWI70 and you will get 70% off your first trial skincare set and an extra 50% off any one extra product that you want to try as well, which is a fantastic deal. You do not want to miss out. I promise you it is so worth it. A massive thank you to Geology for partnering with me for today's video. And let's get back into some pointlessly gendered things. This is a question on Quora that says, what is the male equivalent of the expression ah? I actually know the answer to this one. It's ah, <laughs> or ah. I don't know how to say like A-W-W, ah, ah, ah. Like there's so many different ways to say it. But like ah, you know, that sound. The male equivalent of it is the same because it's it's not a gendered thing. It's an expression. Anyone can use them. If you feel like saying it, say it. That's really, that's the advice. That's all the advice I can give you is that just say what you want and stop being so insecure in your masculinity that it's preventing you from saying a word because it's, it's, it's literally a word. Stop being silly. Stop being silly. This is a photo of someone drinking from a drinking fountain or as they call it, a bubbler that says, Ayo, I don't know who's updating the list of shit men can't do, but can someone add drinking from a bubbler? Cause what the fuck is that as a grown ass man? Where is your water bottle? Why is your mouth open and that close to something? What? <laughs> what? Since when is using a drinking fountain seen as something that only women can do. What do you mean why is your mouth open and that close to something? Your mouth is always open and close to something. Are you not allowed to eat now either? Like that's putting your mouth pretty close to things. You're not allowed to do, what do you, what do you mean? Literally, what are you on about? What are you on about? Sometimes people are thirsty and so they're going to drink water where it is available to them. And like, sometimes people don't wanna carry drink bottles with them or sometimes they forget them. Carrying a water bottle is freaking annoying, especially if you're not going out for that long, but sometimes you get thirsty and that's what the drinking fountains are there for. Like I personally find them a little bit gross um, since like COVID and they were all closed and I like started thinking about it. But like, if I am thirsty and I have to, then I will. And I highly recommend that if you are thirsty, then you should also use one and stop being so insecure in your masculinity that you somehow think that you as a man aren't meant to use it. And I mean, this could be posted by a woman as well. And so that reverses on just like, stop, just stop projecting on what you think is and isn't masculine. Stop putting those ideas on men. It's ridiculous. It's so silly. And I know that this is like meant to be a silly little lighthearted thing, but I just don't think it's very helpful or productive or funny to just like make fun of masculinity and men. Cause all it's doing is like keeping toxic masculinity as a like steady thing. We need to stop with that. This is also funny cause here it says, what the fuck has a grown man? Where is your water bottle, right? But then there's a different post that says, men who carry water bottles in public give me the ick, especially at the airport. You can't go a few hours without having your little sips of water. Carrying around anything is a feminine trait. The only things men should be carrying around are his wallet and a pocket knife, which is 
one of the most absurd things I've seen. I love the other person being like, as a grown man, where's your water bottle? And this person like, why are you carrying a water bottle? That's so feminine. And it just shows how silly and ridiculous and bullshit all of this is. Like everyone just has different preferences and people. And I think having preferences over shit like this is literally the most ridiculous, silly, childish thing in the entire world. But also what do you mean? What do you mean? Especially at the airport too. Like the airport is the place where I always have to have a water bottle. I go out a lot without bringing a water bottle purely because I'm like, it's heavy and it's really annoying to carry. And then I just get thirsty and then I complain about being thirsty. But like an airport, I need a water bottle at the airport because firstly, the aircon is usually like annoying. And then I'm going on a plane for God knows how long. Sometimes they don't bring water around or sometimes the water isn't free. Like I'm gonna have a freaking water bottle because I'm thirsty and I need water because I am a freaking human. I am a living, breathing thing that requires water to, I don't know, live. <laughs> Men are the same in that regard. They also need water to like, I don't know, live. And existing thirsty sucks. And if you have the choice not to, why would you, why would you choose to not, you know? I think that carrying a water bottle is a very fair and reasonable thing to do. I think if you're thirsty, having some water available is like pretty great. Water bottles are one of like the best things we've come up with, I think. Being able to just carry water around with you, that's freaking genius. That's brilliant. I'm so glad that that's something that was created and that's something that we're able to use. Because what do you mean? Just go a few hours without water. But why would you? If you have the option to like drink when you're thirsty, why would you choose to not? I just, the logic is ridiculous. Here we have these little picture books that have like names on them. So you can get them for kids. You find a little picture book with your name on it. Um, and there's two different versions. There's a version for boys and there's a version for girls. And the boys version is wizards and the girls version is unicorns. Because, you know, boys like wizards and girls like unicorns. They can't, they can't all be the same. Obviously there has to be a difference and girls can't like wizards and boys can't like unicorns. Obviously, this is the way that it has to be. It has to be gendered like this. This is the way that it goes. It's especially so funny because they could have just saved themselves the work and just done like one version of the book. They like could have just done wizards or they could have just done unicorns um, and been for everybody. Although I do suppose, unfortunately, there are a lot of parents who like to gender things. And I feel like some parents probably wouldn't buy unicorns for their sons. I feel like they're more inclined by wizards for their daughters, but less inclined by unicorns for their sons, which I think says a lot in itself. Um, like there's a reason they do gendered products is because unfortunately they do sell and that's really sad <laughs> and so ridiculous. But I feel like at the very least in this instance, then if you're going to do both, you should do both for every name. They shouldn't be split by gender. You should just have the option to pick unicorn or wizard, no matter what your name is. That's, that's my thoughts anyway. Here is feminine energy bingo. Owns pearls, brushes hair, takes photos, frequently uses emojis, loves the nighttime, owns knitwear, listens to Lana, bakes, chews gum, adores animals, picks flowers, drinks tea, owns a plushie, writes letters, has a cat, applies lip balm, burns candles, listens to music, artistic, wears rings, paints nails, reads, uses Pinterest, loves bugs. Odd list of things. <laughs> I'm so fucking obsessed with listens to music on a bingo card for feminine energy. Just listening to music is feminine now, apparently. In what, in what way, in what world, how? How? Since when? Since why? That one in particular also takes photos. These are so ridiculously broad. Like all of these, like none of them are gendered even a little bit. And these are the most like vague and broad things ever that apply to like everyone across the board. Like it's astounding to me. This is incredible. This is wild. There's nothing even remotely that even is like, I would say like typically very gendered. And the fact that we're calling this feminine is concerning, I would say. Reads, reading, reading is feminine. I'm just baffled by this. Who, who came up with this? Why is this a list? Are we just trying to tick off like men getting as many squares as possible to just be like, see, 
we're all a little bit feminine. All men are feminine to some degree. Like, I mean, I guess, yeah, everyone has a mixture of femininity and masculinity, but none of it comes down to these things. Um, and these things are all ridiculous things to say are exclusively feminine. Then none of these are really very feminine at all, I would say. You have dry lips and do something about it. That's a feminine thing. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Here is two products at a party shop. It's a party queen inflatable crown and a party king inflatable crown. What's the difference you ask? Nothing, not a single thing. It is the exact same product, but in a different box. <laughs> one of them has a woman on the front and one of them has a man on the front. And that's, that's the difference. That's it. The only difference is the box. It's the exact same product. But what is for women and what is for men? And again, it's so funny and so sad to think about the fact the reason they've done this is purely to get more sales. Even if they just put like inflatable crown, like, and the photo on the box was a woman, less men would buy it and then vice versa. I guess they could do like inflatable crown and then put both a man and a woman on the front. But weirdly enough, especially to play into like male ego, then you're less inclined to buy things that like are also for women. And I find that so sad. The fact that like this is an effective marketing thing that like you say something is specifically for men and more men are gonna buy it. Like you see it with like soap and shit all the time. It's like, here's soap for men because they're like, oh hell yeah, I can't use normal soap. That's, that's girly shit. Um, only women use soap, but this soap, this is for men. So I'm gonna buy it. Like. It's so sad that the reason they do it is because it fucking works. <laughs> like, oh my God, it's astounding. And I mean, I can't pin it all on men, obviously. It obviously affects women to a degree too, or it wouldn't, like, they would just sell the men's thing and then women would buy that without needing a woman thing. But like, I see men being much more insecure about it um, more often. So they were my main example there. Here are some uh, unisex names for girls, unisex names for boys, unique unisex names for girls, and unique unisex names for boys. Do, do you think that they know what unisex means? Do you think these lists are all identical? I'd like to think that they're just the same list written like four times, um, because I don't, I don't quite think that's how this works. <laughs> if you've got a unisex name for a girl, it's not a unisex name. It's, it's just, it's just not. I like that that implies you're looking for like a unisex name that has more feminine energy. And like, in which case, again, I, I, I don't think you're trying to choose a unisex name. I just don't, I just don't think that that's what's happening. I don't think you can separate unisex names into gender because that's literally the opposite of the point. Fucking hell, it's so funny. People, people are so funny. Here's a comic strip of death and Deadpool. And it's basically them just flirting. What they're saying doesn't really matter very much, um, but it's them flirting. And this is hilarious because they've given death boobs, which is so funny because death is a skeleton and boobs do not have bones. But thinking about the fact that death is just a skeleton with boobs is objectively so fucking funny. It's so funny that they had to be like, death is a woman. So how do we make that known? Boobs. It's especially hilarious due to the fact I'm pretty sure that Deadpool is like canonically pansexual, no? So like they didn't even have to do this like heterosexual reasons because we all know that Deadpool is not heterosexual, but yet they had to make death a woman and the way to show that was boobs. Just don't give death a gender. Like death in general, I don't think death should have a gender. Death, th death is not a gendered entity. Why did you give it boobs? This is a tweet from PragerU that says, to believe that men and women are basically the same is to believe delusion, trust common sense. And then it's got an image of a, um, like a cartoon man and woman lying in bed and she is under the cover and he is kicked out of the cover. And she is thinking about shoes um, having a kid and chocolate. And he is thinking about tools, women and burgers. So, you know, that's the difference between men and women is that women sleep under the cover, men don't. 
Women think about shoes while men think about tools. Women think about family while men think about women. And women think about chocolate and men think about burgers. Those are the, those are the differences between them. I am also losing my mind over the fact that PragerU, who is like for traditional marriage and like monogamy and like saving sex to a marriage, et cetera, et cetera, um, is like saying that women want a family and men, they don't give a fuck about their kids. They're just dreaming about women. That seems against your values, Pragi you. That feels like a self call out there. I, hello? You're always here like, there's nothing more wonderful than having a family, than settling down, having your wife and kids, you know, having sex with one person, being in love, traditional family. And you're like, but men don't actually ever think about their kids um, or necessarily their wife, just like women in general, or if they do, or maybe it is his wife, but th that implies that he doesn't give a fuck about his kid, which is, wild that's ridiculous why why are you out here being like men don't give a fuck they don't care about their kids i don't think you're you're selling men very well there uh you seem to be selling men a little bit short yeah the difference between men and women is that women care about their children and men they don't you should do some work on that i think men should care about their children i think everyone should care about their children and finally we have this little like two by two comic strip between a Banana, who you can tell is a woman because has ponytail bow and a pink high heeled shoe, and an apple, whom you can tell is a man because he has none of those things. Um, and the banana says, I have a big problem at work. And the apple says, want to find a solution? She says, no. So he asks, want to aggressively gossip? And she says, hell yeah. Because women don't want to find solutions. They just want to gossip with no purpose and don't want to find solutions at all. They just want to run their mouths and gossip and not do anything productive. And they don't want men's help. They just want to talk and talk and talk. I find it so funny because this is so like missing the point entirely of what this gossip actually is. Like if there is a problem at work, I don't want to come home and talk to you and have you tell me how to fix my problem. I'm figuring that shit out for myself. I just want you to listen to me. And that's the thing that you see so many of these like things and like men will say being like, women never want a solution. They don't want me to help. They just want to run their mouths. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, I just want your support. I just want someone to listen. I can figure my own shit out. I can fix shit for myself. I know how to problem solve. I just need to rant and I need to talk. And like through talking, I'll figure out the solution or sometimes I've already got the solution. You just need to like get it off your chest. And it's just nice to talk about things with someone that you love. And it's just nice to be listened to and feel heard. And when you immediately come back and just be like, you should do this, you should do this. It's like you're invalidating our experiences. And I think that we all benefit, no matter your gender, from just talking things through. Like if you explain the issue and you express your emotions and your frustration, it's going to help you find the solution and figure it out and solve it for yourself. And just like boiling that down to just like pointless gossip is like, fuck off, you know? <laughs> like that's not what this is. And even if it was, it doesn't fucking matter. Sometimes gossiping is fun. Talking shit is just fun. Let me solve my own problems. If I want your help, I'll ask you for your help. That's the thing. Don't offer your opinions where they're not asked for. This has been my video. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'm here twice a week and I'd love to see you again. A massive thank you to my Sprout and Above patrons whose names are on the screen right now. I appreciate you greatly. And a huge, huge thank you to my Kiwi Cat patrons. Bobby, Josh, Mandy, Ikazel, Jessica, Eldo, Danielle, Raven, Elias, Chris, Samuel, and Knitting Menace. I love and appreciate you so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. If anyone else would like to become a patron, go to patreon.com slash savvycat. We'll click the top link in the description. For as little as one pound a month, you get my videos a day early, as well as podcasts a week early. And then for three pounds and up, you get things such as outtakes, bonus mini podcasts, live streams, vlogs, and more. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, the Queer Kiwi, and Twitter, that Queer Kiwi. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. When you close your eyes